The trouble is not with the Jews. The trouble is the, with Zionists. Jews don't like Zionists. Most Zionists are false Jews. Unfortunately, something new has developed in the world in the last hundred years, a new movement and ideology, and that is called Zionism. People confuse Judaism and Zionism. They consider it one and the same. But there, couldn't, there could be nothing further from the truth because in actuality, Zionism is antithetical to Judaism. It is the diametric opposite. Judaism is a religion, a spirituality, to serve God, to be subservient to God, practiced by Jewish people for thousands of years, to emulate God. As in Hebrew we say, Just as God is compassionate, you must be compassionate. Zionism is the transformation of Judaism into something new, entirely different, into nationalism, a political goal to have a land, to be a proud nation amongst nations, removing God from the equation. Judaism was the way of the Jewish people for thousands of years by all the God-fearing Jews. Zionism is a hundred years old by non-practice created, concocted by non-religious Jews as a whole, Theodor Herzl, people who detested and abhorred the religion and looked for a way out, for a way to be considered still distinguished people and still remain not people who were thrown out of the community, so they gave themselves a new form of Judaism. Congressman Julius Kahn presented Woodrow Wilson with a letter from three prominent Jewish Americans. They were Henry Berkowitz of Philadelphia, Max Senior of Cincinnati, and Professor Morris Jastrow of the University of Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. It read in part, we raise our voices in mourning and protest against the demand of the Zionists for the reorganization of the Jews as a national unit, to whom now or in the future territorial sovereignty in Palestine shall be committed. And this demand not only misrepresents the trend of the history of the Jews, who ceased to be a nation 2,000 years ago, but involves the limitation and possible annulment of the larger claims of Jews for full citizenship and human rights in all lands in which those rights are not yet secure. We ask that Palestine be constituted as a free and independent state, to be governed under a democratic form of government recognizing no distinctions of creed, race, or ethnic descent, and with adequate power to protect the country against oppression of any kind. We do not wish to see Palestine either now or at any time in the future organized as a Jewish state. The Torah is very clear in that when there was a decree of exile for the Jewish people 2,000 years ago, we were expressly told by God that we are forbidden to try to recreate our own establishment, our own entity. We are forbidden to have a state. Even in an uninhabited land, we must accept that our being expelled from the land of Palestine and the destruction of the temple was not because of our physical lacking, but only because of our spiritual lacking, that we were not on enough of a high level of spirituality. 
the books of the prophets are opened, anybody can see and read that. And we yearn and pray as a Jewish people for the day when ultimately God will end this exile that we have been sent into by He Himself without any human intervention when all humanity will recognize the one God there will be a metaphysical change in the world as it states across from the United Nations in the conclave wall called the Isaiah Wall that the day will come when they will beat the swords into plowshares one nation will not pick up a sword against another nation that is what we as a Jewish people must yearn and pray for. And until that day comes, we must be loyal citizens, exemplary people throughout the world to serve God, be subservient, and be kind-hearted, good people as God requires. I start by saying that I'm a Palestinian with strong Armenian roots, with a commitment to serve Palestine as a whole. I am a product of the Palestine that was pre the State of Israel with a birth certificate that says Palestine. And I think I have inherited that vision of that beautiful geographic, geographical spot that is a melting pot of different ethnic groups which in my Christian faith is also the cradle of Christianity but also the source of Judaism and Islam. I know that when I visit APEC, I'm among friends, good friends. <laughs> friends who share my strong commitment to make sure that the bond between the United States and Israel is unbreakable today, unbreakable tomorrow, unbreakable forever. I have been proud to be a part of a strong bipartisan consensus that has stood by Israel in the face of all threats. That is a commitment. That is a commitment that both John McCain and I share because support for Israel in this country goes beyond party. Our alliance is based on shared interests and shared values. Those who threaten Israel threaten us. Israel has always faced these threats on the front lines. And I will bring to the White House an unshakable commitment to Israel's security. We know that the establishment of Israel was just and necessary, rooted in centuries of struggle and decades of patient work. But 60 years later, we know that we cannot relent, we cannot yield, and as president, I will never compromise when it comes to Israel's security.